Have you ever been tracking something really simple and then out of nowhere the track just gets completely lost? Me too, it happens on a regular basis. In this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating a frequency separation technique that's really useful for tracking, especially on things like skin. I recently used this technique to complete over 20 cleanup shots on the first season of Miss Marvel. So let's take a look at how it works. The test footage you'll see in this video and the nuke script with the setup are available on my Patreon. So if you'd like to get your hands on it, it's available and it really helps me to continue making these videos. To demonstrate this technique, I've got four bits of footage here. We've got this very, very plain looking footage, which is actually a shot of a wall. Then there's a shot of my arm. This is just to demonstrate how it works on some skin and pores stretching. And then I've also got a couple of shots of my face to demonstrate how it works on the skin on your face as well. And I did some fun stuff where I was scrunching my face up towards the end. First off, I'll set it up on this shot and then we'll go through and apply it onto all the other ones in the script. So the basis of the effect is essentially separating high frequency information in the plate from everything else. What that means is we want to add a load of contrast into areas like the pores on my skin and things that are not currently very visible. But there's loads of information there that we can extract with a very simple way of processing the image. So the first step in this process is we want to add a blur node and we're just going to blur the footage by a few pixels. Let's start off with about three. And then what you want to do is move this off to the side and add a merge and connect it to your original source footage. And then you want to set this to minus. What this is doing is it's looking at the difference between our original plate, which is this, and the blurred image, which as you can imagine is removing any of the very sharp details. So you can see all of the crispness in the hair on my eyebrows and everything is disappearing. A lot of the texture in my skin disappears. So you can see all of the sort of imperfections in my skin where the pores are and everything. All of that gets blurred out. So then when this gets taken away from the plate, what we're left with is everything else that isn't included in this blur. So in this case, that's the information in my pores and all of the extra detail in my hair and everything. If I turn the viewport gain up higher, it kind of exaggerates this effect. Now, one thing to know about this is that obviously you can see it's picking up lots of the noise at the moment. And if I play this, it will actually be quite noisy. This isn't too bad of an example because my camera is pretty good in low light, but you can see, especially on the background here, it's going pretty nuts. Obviously, the reason for this is that noise in itself is very high frequency detail in the shot, but it's not necessarily the kind of thing that we want to be including in this processing. So to make it a little bit softer and try and remove some of the flickering from the noise, we can actually denoise the footage. So I'm just going to select an area of the frame that's got some noise in it on a fairly flat color. And now if I compare the difference between those. This is with the denoise and this is without. And I can even change the settings to make it a bit stronger. Now, as you can see, what's left behind is basically just the high frequency detail of all of the stuff in the shot without too much of the noise flickering on it. Changing the amount of blur is kind of like changing the sensitivity of this image process. So the lower the number, the more it's gonna pick up the very, very fine details like my pores. And then as you start to turn it up, you start to lose the very small details and it just starts to focus on larger identifiable areas of the frame. So let's put this setup on some of the other shots. The result of this one is fairly dark, but what you can do is add a grade node and turn the white point up. And this is gonna introduce some more contrast, which will allow us to see the details better. And similarly, turning down the black point will actually remove some of the stuff that we probably don't want in the back, like some of the noise. Again, as you can see, there's an enormous amount of detail that we can pull out of my cheek here. And there's loads of texture that stays consistent across all the frames. So this isn't noise, this is actual detail in my skin. Again, similar sort of idea on this shot. This is what the original shot looks like. My arm has some hairs on it and a few freckles and things here and there. So there is stuff to track, but in general, the skin is obviously just a pretty flat color. Whereas if we apply this image processing, it introduces an enormous amount of contrast and you can see all of the features on my arm much more clearly. And there's now loads of contrast here if we wanted to do something like a planar track. This would give it loads of stuff to grab onto and it's very consistent across all the frames. And then lastly, this shot of the wall I thought would be a really good example because there is quite literally nothing to track in this. It's just a white frame. However, we apply the same sort of effect. So let's add a blur. I'll start with about a three pixel blur. And again, minus this from the footage. And we can add a grade node and crank this up a little bit. And as you can see here, as I start turning up the blur, it starts to extract a lot of the detail in the plaster of the wall. This one, pretty much impossible to track. This one has loads of features that we can actually use to track or even do a manual track just by identifying some things on the wall. And by mucking about with the denoise a bit more, we can try and remove as much of that high frequency noise as we can so that we're just left with the texture of the wall itself, which you can see kind of up here. There we go, that's the whole idea of the technique really. Like I said, it works amazingly well for tracking things like skin and even for shots when you're camera tracking walls and floors, this can be really useful. I think I might try and make some more of these short nuke tips and tricks videos. So let me know if there's anything else in the comments you'd like to see and I'll see you in the next video.